In this video, we're going to look at building a web API that can return XML in C Sharp. And I know what you're thinking, XML, why the heck do we want to return XML? Isn't everyone using JSON? And you're mostly right, except there are still some things that use XML. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. Recently, when I was working on my blog, which is built on Steven Giesel's Blazor blog engine, I found myself having to make some changes that needed to return XML on a web API. If you're not familiar with having your own blog or building your own website this way, having something like a sitemap is very helpful for search engines, and that's built in XML. Not only sitemaps, but if you want to have an RSS feed, that's also using XML. So XML is still used, not everything is JSON. So in this video, we're going to be looking at different ways that we can return XML from a minimal API and from a controller, and that way you can compare and contrast these different mechanisms. If that sounds interesting, just a reminder to subscribe to the channel and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. Now, let's jump over to Visual Studio and play with some minimal APIs. All right, in Visual Studio here, you can see that I have a minimal API set up from line 12 to 20. You'll also notice if you look a little bit above that, I have some code to be able to map controllers and add controllers. And that's because in just a moment, we'll be looking at that as well. If we look at this minimal API that I have, it's just going to be at the root, so no dedicated path for that. I'm just going to show that we can technically return a string that has some XML in it. And we'll see what that looks like and then continue to build on top of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and it's probably gonna be pretty obvious to you what happens here, but it's still worth us going through. All right, when I head over to our route, what we can see here is that I have this text coming back exactly as you might have expected, nothing too fancy here. However, if you're not familiar with looking at this kind of stuff in a browser versus calling it from a programmatic API, the thing that we need to call out here is that this is just plain text and we don't have a content type. So that will mean that in terms of the browser, it just sees it as plain text. And if we're working with an API, there's no extra information to indicate sort of the content type or the format that this data is in. Now, this is an XML and we do have a MIME type that can support that. So let's go back to the code and make sure we can configure that properly. The most common way that we generally do this kind of thing is we would say something like results and then we would say something like okay because we're returning a 200 then we put in the contents and there's no actual overload that lets us specify the mime type here and that means that it's just going to be plain text every single time so we don't have access to doing that with results.ok but we do have some other things we can use. All right so what I'm going to be doing instead of saying results.ok is doing results.file Results.file takes in a stream, it could also be a file path, and we're going to specify application slash XML as the MIME type. So that will mean that we can use a stream here, and we're going to use this string here in contents, which is the XML content we have. We're going to convert that to bytes and then wrap it in a memory stream. That will allow us to basically take this string here from line 14 and feed it back on the minimal API. And this time we're going to have the content type specified. So if we go run this one more time, we should be able to see that it looks a little bit different. It should still be the same string, but the format will be different in the browser. Let's go ahead and refresh. And we can see that it says that it is XML, right? So it's saying that it doesn't have any style information associated with it, but you can see that the browser truly does understand that it's an XML structure now. So we're one step further in being able to do this properly. Let's go back to Visual Studio and check out what we can do with the controller. Okay, from line 21 down to 31, I have a controller here. The route that we're going to be hitting is now slash controller, just to give it a different route for us. And you'll notice that the body of this is almost identical. It's just that because we're inheriting from controller base here, I don't have to have results.file. In fact, this is going to be an I result if you look at the IntelliSense when I'm hovering over this in the tooltip. And that means if I go down to here, you can see it's I action result. So this is slightly different. They're not the exact same thing but this is essentially the same mechanism. So if I were to go run this now and go to slash controller, we will get the exact same result. So let's go do that very quickly. All right, so if I head to this route now, press enter, you can see that it did finish loading and it's the exact same thing. So both the minimal API and the controller work with this type of format. Now at this point, that's not super exciting. We're able to basically just return a string and now we can tell the browser or the caller, the MIME type or the content type that we're dealing with. So that's a step forward, that's all nice. However, if we're reflecting back to the scenario that I personally started with, I needed to be able to return a sitemap and I needed to be able to return an RSS feed. Both of these things are XML documents. Now, the tricky thing is that I didn't want to have to go essentially write this custom XML into a string every single time. I didn't want to have to format it that way. 
In fact, I never want to have to think about that. So as we go forward in the rest of this video, we're going to be looking at some ways that we can enhance our ability to return XML on minimal APIs. Okay, so the next step that we're going to be doing then is serialization. So I have a new route that I've introduced here right on line 19 called slash serialize. So that's what we'll be going to next. And what you'll see in the body of this is that I'm actually doing something a little bit different. I'm no longer just hard coding a string that has some XML inside of it. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm making a new XML serializer, and this is just built in in system XML serialization. And then I can make it based on the type of XML record. Now, XML record is going to be something that I've created. If I scroll down a little bit lower, you can see that I have a class called XML record. It needs to have a public parameter list constructor. And then I have message on it, which is just a string value. This is going to be almost mapping to what we had in the browser. It's just that I'm calling it XML record and not XML, so we don't have a funny naming conflict. But that's just a minor detail. You'll see in just a moment that it comes out to being roughly the same type of thing. So I make a new instance of this record, and essentially what I'm trying to show you is that this here from line 22 to 25 will end up mapping roughly to something that looks like what we have on line 15 here. If we go down a little bit lower, you can see that I make a new memory stream. And then you can see that on line 27, I'm asking the serializer to serialize that record that we have here into the stream. I've also just noticed that I had a capital S on that, and that's going to drive me nuts, so I'm changing it on the fly here. What we do after that is we set the stream position back to zero so that we have a stream populated with the data that we need, and we're saying that that stream is currently at the beginning. And that way, when we go to send it back, again, using results.file, which is what we saw in the previous example up here on line 17, exact same idea, that stream is now going to be a string having our XML data in it. Before we move on, this is just a quick reminder that I do have a course on C-sharp refactoring available on Dome Train. Refactoring is one of the most critical skills that you can learn as a software engineer, and this helps you continue to build upon applications that already exist, making sure that they can scale and have extensibility. I walk you through a bunch of various techniques and give you some examples that we walk through together to see how we can apply these techniques to refactor the code. Check out the pinned comment and the links in the description to get this course. Now back to the video. Essentially, all that we're doing is taking an object and converting it into an XML string. Everything else is essentially what we've already seen, especially having this MIME type. Let's go run this and go to slash serialize now. If I head over to slash serialize and press enter, you'll see that it was almost the same. A little bit of extra information here. This is going to be some of the schema information. And then you'll notice it's also now XML record and it's with a capital X. If I go back, you'll see that it's almost the same, right? But this is just because of how the serialization was working. I named things with this casing and that's why it's coming out that way. But this information with the schema is just extra. So in the end, what we were able to do here is take an object that we had in memory and serialize it into a string. I didn't have to go manually by hand, try and construct this string, because that would be a bit of a pain in the butt, especially if you're considering that a sitemap gets pretty tricky. Just to briefly show you, if I go over to my website, devleader.ca, you can see that if I scroll through this, there are tons of entries in here. I can tell you right now, I'm not about to go build up this sitemap by hand by modifying a string or using a string builder. Absolutely no way. I would just rather ask a serializer to go do all of that work for me. But let's go back to Visual Studio and talk about making this a little bit better. So the thing that I really don't like about this is that if I have multiple things that I want to have returning XML, it basically means that I have to have this pattern sort of copied and pasted everywhere. It's a kind of ugly solution. It gets the job done, but I don't like having to have the same type of thing everywhere. And like I said, in terms of reading what this is doing, yeah, we can tell what it's doing, but it's not very nice overall. I mentioned that in my use case, I needed a sitemap. I also needed to have my RSS feed. Those are two things that I would essentially have to do something just like this. Of course, building up this data type that I have to go return would look different, but ultimately I'd have all this other code around here just to be able to return an XML document. Now, wouldn't it be nice that if instead of saying something like results.file, I could instead say something like results.xml and just return the object that I want as XML. It's almost like when we have results.ok, we can give it an object and it goes back as JSON. I think that would be awesome to be able to have. 
So let's try and build that. This is going to be a solution that I've taken from Andrew Locke, who has a blog post on this. Andrew Locke has tons of awesome blog posts with tons of helpful C Sharp and .NET tips. This is exactly where this thought came from. We're able to build an XML result, which inherits from iResult, which means we can go use that on our minimal API. And you'll see that we're able to use a serializer here, and it's going to be based off of the type T because this is going to be a generic type. What we're able to do is create this and pass in the instance that we want to work with and set that to being the result. Now, the I result has this execute async, which takes in the HTTP context, which we can see here. And then we have a little bit of a null check here. So we'll throw if that context is null. Shouldn't have to worry about that, though. And then the other part that it's going to look quite familiar is right down here where we have the memory stream. We're going to ask that serializer to do the serialization for us. So exact same thing we saw earlier. We're now going to set the response content type to being the XML MIME type here. So that's happening on line 71. This is instead of us saying results.file and passing in the type, we're able to actually specify that right on response.content type. We're going to reset that stream position back to zero and then copy that stream into the body. Ultimately, the body is the thing that we need to populate on the response because that's what gets sent back to the caller. So doing stream.copy to async is going to take the stream that we've just filled from the serializer and copy that over to the response's body. This is essentially everything that we've already built, but now we get to package this up into something that's nice. All right, so how would this look? Well, if I wanted to do XML result, which we have here, I can go say an XML result of XML record, which is going to be the type that we have right up here. I can go make a new one. So we'll call it result equals new. And then I will pass in our record that we have here. Then from there, I can return result. This will essentially give us the same type of thing that we had before. Instead of having all of this code up here that we would have to copy and paste to anything we want to return XML, we now have this little short form way where we can make a new XML result and return it on the minimal API. So let's go ahead and press play and see if this works. Okay, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. And voila, we have the exact same thing, which doesn't seem that exciting, but the fact that it is the exact same thing is what we want. We wanted this exact behavior, but to wrap it up in an XML result. But there's one more thing we can do, and I wanted to show you how to make this feel a little bit closer to results dot something. Because in this case, what we were doing was making a new object. And what I would like to do instead is just say return results dot something and give us that familiar workflow. To illustrate what I mean, if we look on line 30, we can see return results.file. What I would love to be able to do is say something like return and then results.xml, something like that, pass in result, and then it's all nice on one line, just like this, just like we would have had before on line 30. And that's what I would like to get to. The problem is that this results type is actually going to be static here. So how we were doing results.file, this is a static method call. And the unfortunate thing is that we can't extend this. We can't go add an extension method called .xml, but we can do something else because they thought about this ahead of time. What we can do is say results.extensions. And extensions, if we have a close look, is going to be I result extensions. So this allows us to go make an extension method on this because we can extend I result extensions. This is a great idea. So this is what I would like to have, but we don't have the extension method yet. So how do we go do that? And I stand corrected. I should have said record needs to be inside of here. That's what I get for naming my variables. Almost the same thing. So this is what we want. How do we get it? Well, as I hinted, the answer is with an extension method. So we can go make a new static class called XML result extensions. You can call this whatever you would like, as long as the name doesn't conflict. And then we can say public static I result because that's going to be the return type. Then we can say XML because that's going to be the name of the static method we want to call. And then we need this, which is going to be the keyword that we need to use for an extension method, if you're not familiar with that. And that's going to be result extensions type. And then we don't actually need to use this at all because we're not taking any operations on that instance. But we also need to pass in the thing that we want to be wrapped and converted into XML. Once we have result, we can go pass that into a new instance of our XML result. This is essentially what we had on the line above, and now we're just converting it over to being an extension method. So if I scroll back up here, you can see 
that this now compiles. If we go clean this up, get rid of all that, look at how nice and succinct that looks. That's a way better solution, in my opinion, than having to go build up a string of XML like this, and then having everyone have to know that they need to go convert it to a stream, and then they also have to pass in the MIME type. Instead, we can just build up what we need, have a serializer take care of it for us, using an extension method and a custom result type. Let's go run this and see if it works. Moment of truth, if I press enter here, hopefully we get the same result. And we do, it's the exact same. Sometimes boring results are the results that we want. So in this video, we looked at several different ways that we can return a string that's holding XML inside of it. We initially looked at the fact that we wanna make sure that we have the MIME type specified as application slash XML, and that way callers know the content type from the HTTP request that they're dealing with. From there though, we wanted to make it a little bit more streamlined for use. So instead of having to build up a string, if we just wanna use a serializer, how do we do that instead? And how can we make that all wrapped up into a nice, easy way to call? Now, I'm not telling you that building up by a string or using a string builder is the wrong way to do it, but for my own use cases, I didn't wanna to have to worry about that. You may very well be able to use a string builder, write your own serialization and make it way more performant. That might be something that you want to explore for your use case, but in my use case, I just want simplicity. I just want to be able to go build my sitemap just like this, pass it into this nice simple extension method, and then I'm gonna be using a caching layer on top of this anyway in my own use case. So this worked very well for me, and I wanted to share with you how you can return XML on minimal APIs. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.